a very special talent out of Los Angeles, Mr. Ry Cooter. <laughs> community and welcome youtubers from everywhere most of you are probably familiar with Ry Cooter because of this record and the other record related the Buena Vista Social Club where he went down to Cuba and got these old timers to do a recording and then here he brought him up to Carnegie Hall Yep, he's did quite a bit of production here in later years and is a real talent but in this video, we're going to talk about his musical career. In the 1970s, when you guys was listening to hair rock and hard rock and heavy metal and punk and all that kind of stuff, what was I listening to? I was listening to Ry Cooter. He was one of my favorites. His first record, 1970. In addition, I was listening to Randy Newman, Bonnie Raitt, Maria Muldar, and a lot of ragtime and traditional jazz. But Ry Cooter was one of my favorites during this time period. Here's the back. Nice, uh, very clean first edition. Here's the record. Rye is one of the best electric slide guitar players in the world, in my opinion. He's a musician's musician. And one of the things is the emotion in music is often portrayed through the dynamics. And in the process of playing an electric slide acoustic, I think Rye uses more dynamics, gets more emotion into the music than any other artist of his type, and so let's dig in a little deeper. All my life I've been a driving man All my life I've been a driving man Staying alone and doing the best I can I ship my trunk down to Tennessee Ship my trunk down to Tennessee It's hard to tell about a man like me In 1972, Rye issued two records. This one, I believe, is his second record, Boomer's Story. This, the MoFi edition. And here I have number 1231, a nice low number. Interestingly, even though he was one of my favorites back in the day, I never had this record. Of course, I picked it up on the MoFi, and I was listening to a podcast fairly recently when working on this video. A guy just specifically did about a 20-30 minute video just on this record and Ry Cooter. And it was fascinating. And Boomer's Story, written by Ry Cooter. I just love that tune. We're going to have a little clip here. Saw the girl again. Never saw the girl again. Left that girl beside the railroad. Never saw the girl.
Coast Line Railroad Never paid a nickel fare Been from Maine to California Canada to Mexico And I never tried to save no money Now I got no place to go Boy, now I got no place to go Listen to a boomer story to what I say Hear another train a coming Yes, I'll be on my way If you want to do me a favor When I lay me down and die Just dig my grave beside the railroad So I can hear the trains go by Boy, So I can hear the trains go by Checking out that tune, Boomer Story, on YouTube, I discovered that the Black Crows had a fairly good-sized hit with that tune. And in 2010, Record Store Day, 7-inch single. Now, if I could have found it on an LP, I would have got the LP. Uh, the Black Crows liked doing this tune. They often did it as an encore. They put out the 7-inch single, clear vinyl. Sounds fantastic. Great version. I was afraid to try to put a clip up here for you. Check out Boomer Story by the Black Crows. I keep saying I don't collect 7-inch singles, but I'm being forced. I'm being forced, I tell you. Also issued in 1972, Into the Purple Valley. Nice cover art. Nice gatefold. This, uh, like all of his early records on the Reprise label. One of the things about uh, these early records, uh, Boomer Story in the Case, and this record and some others, they were produced by Jim Dickinson and Larry Warner Warnaker. Jim Dickinson, a very good musician, uh, keyboards and guitars, a good producer, and he helped make some of these records better, and he had kind of an interesting career and had some good records on his own. As a side project of working on the Rye Cooter here, I discovered more about him. His son got his old studio. His son is putting out some like-kinded music, which is quite good, and uh, it's just the old story. One thing leads to another, and there is no end to it. Also, in 1972, this record came out. Jamming with Edward has Nicky Hopkins, Ry Cooter, Mick Jagger, Bill Wyman, and Charlie Watt. I think you can pick up this record fairly inexpensively, and with all those names on it, surprisingly, it's... Uh, I uh, hate to use a word like mediocre, but it's not as good as what you would hope for. Just the completest here. Yell nut, who's in town, Mr. Diddy Wad Diddy. Mr. Diddy Wad Diddy. I wish somebody would tell me what Diddy Wad Diddy mean. Rise fourth album. From 1974, this is the 2016 Speaker's Corner All Analog Reissue. Rye on acoustic guitar and Earl Father Hines on piano. Can you imagine them as a pair? Yeah, most people do this Diddy Wah Diddy Blind Blake tune under three minutes. These guys are having so much fun, they go on for nearly six minutes. Didn't put a clip in here, but if this appeals to you, you should go check it out. Because it's worth the price of admission. What does Diddy Wah Diddy mean? I went to church, put my hat on the seat. 
lady sat on it and said, that Daddy, you show is sweet. Mr. Diddy Wah Diddy. Mr. Diddy Wah Diddy. I wish somebody would tell me what Diddy Wah Diddy means. That's for show. Sure. In 1976, when this record came out, maybe one of his best records, probably not the biggest selling record. This is record is probably close to one of my top 10 all-time favorites. I have probably got too many records in my top 10. Chicken Skin Music. There's the back cover, again on the reprise label. He had got it all together here. He had wanted to add a little flavor to his music. And he had been down on the Texas-Mexico border looking for a little flavor, a little Tejano music. And he found it in Flaco Jimenez, the accordion concertina player who then often played with him and recorded with him. It's on this record. He's a little bit uh, on the previous record. And the other group that he come in full force with by the time of this record was his backup singers with Bobby King, Terry Evans, who were almost always in his uh, backup group, and a couple other guys, Herman Johnson and Willie Green, uh, Bobby King still around. Terry Evans died last year, but uh, he loved those backup singers. Sometimes they got to do a solo. Sometimes Flacco Jimenez got to do a solo. And uh, Chicken Skin Music was a perfect title. Just a really nice first edition. Very clean, as my friend Bob would say. Just in case here says this one's VG plus, not so good, but bam, came out last year on MoFi. I pre-ordered these. I got number 186, pretty low number. And you know, just in case, here's a sealed backup copy, number 187 to go with 186 going to have a clip in here for you and again just one of my all-time favorite records home of the brave land of the free i don't want to be mistreated by no bourgeoisie lord in a bourgeois town a bourgeois town i got the bourgeois blues gonna spread the news all around I heard a white man say, I don't want no niggas up there, Lord, in a blue wall town. Blue wall town. I got the blue wall blue, gonna spread the news. Seventy-seven. his next album called Showtime this is my original copy that I bought back in the day I see it was a cutout probably wouldn't have known what that was back then it's in pretty good condition Showtime I call it chicken skin music number two because it's just a continuation of the last album for many years uh, one of my favorite records that I played over and over now here in the modern era I went to Discogs and I got a still in the shrink near mint white label promo 
sound is fantastic. On this record, one of my tunes that I learned from this record that I like so much, at the dark end of the street, and he's going to use those backup singers on this one, so I hope you enjoy this little clip. <laughs> Next, in 1978, another one of my favorite Ray Cooters, Jazz. This is my original copy from back in the day, still in the shrink. And, you know, just in case, near mint off of Discogs. Uh, this record uh, has more old-time stuff, very unusual, very interesting. Has a couple Bix Beiderbeck tunes on it. Big Bad Bill is Sweet William Now, The Dream, Jelly Roll Morton's The Pearls. You'll get the idea of the music right in the middle of my sweet spot. And if you like a little of this kind of stuff, I've probably seen these in the dollar bin. But when I got rid of records back in the day, this is one I kept. I did not research the question, but Bop Till You Drop, 1979, I think this was probably his best-selling record. This was a case where the record company kind of went all out to get him more commercial success. We could say the record is a little more commercial than the other kind of records he was doing, but musically it's just as good as any of the others. This is a Rhino reissue from back seven or eight years ago. Uh, got this because great sounding record and uh, here's an old original still in the Super Saver version. Has some good tunes on here. Little Sister, uh, the very thing. Has a few guest artists on here. We're going to have a little clip where uh, He's uh, got in with the backup singer Shaka Khan. She's on a couple of the tracks. And one of the things been noted before, this record is advertised as the very first all-digital rock record. Now, not just the very first all-digital record, the first all-digital rock record. So this was recorded digitally. So 1979, uh, we're lucky that we still got some tape in the 1980s, but when this record come out, I really liked it. I got the record when it come out. Later on, I got the CD. And so those of you who have a little interest in here who are still with me, stay tuned. I'll try to move a little faster through some of these others.
here's a few other Rise records I have. Borderline near mint copy. Here's one I was not familiar with. I picked up at my store not too long ago. The Slide Area, Rye Cooter, White Label Promo, and boy was this an unexpected surprise. And here's one, it's a Direct Metal Master, a near mint, Get Rhythm. Also, this is one I picked up at my store. Of course, he's done lots of CDs and uh, here in the modern era, and I have a lot of those CDs, but I'm not going to dig them out. Starting in 1980, Rye got into doing the music for movies. His first one, The Long Riders, 1980. This was a good movie, and I read about the movie when it came out, and that Rye Cooter was noted for doing the soundtrack music for this, so I saw this in the movie theater when it came out, specifically because Rye Cooter did the music quite good. This is a western. It is based upon uh, some actual events from history, and it's a movie worth watching if you haven't seen it. Now, Ray Cooter was kind of a Hollywood kid growing up like Randy Newman, and uh, they were friends. I don't have any information, but I wonder if maybe uh, his association with Randy Newman maybe got him into doing movie soundtracks because he had a good career in music, but not a big career. He has done lots of uh, movies, and I'm just going to show you the few that I have here. Now, the one most of you in the vinyl community will be familiar with is Crossroads, which is about the old blues fable story. Uh, this movie is quite good. It's not a great uh, movie, but uh, you guys in the music community, you should watch this on the Warner Brothers label. <laughs> People say, well, some of these people can really shred. Well, Rye can really shred, but you don't ever get to see him do that because he's a musical musician. In this movie, near the climactic ending with the guy's name, Vi, guitar player Rye Cooter plays the opposite part where they're competing uh, to save their soul from the devil and you get a little idea of what Ry Cooter can do on a guitar with that. Watch the movie, quite good. The Border, a lot of these take place in the South, Westerns. Uh, this one, of course, down on the border with Mexico. This area where he is quite familiar with the music and has the guys in his bands. Good movie. And the last one I have, still sealed, Paris, Texas. Again, we're down in that part of the country on white vinyl. He's done the music for lots of movies, and this is just the four that I happen to have. Back in 2003, Ray got together with Emmanuel Galban and did this record, Double LP, Gatefold, Mambo, Sinuendo doing some of that Cuban style stuff. A really nice gatefold. Really nice record. I'd pick that record up and still have the sealed copy. Then uh, here just a year or so ago, Vinyl Me Please had this as their exclusive pressing. And last year, in my year-end collection last year, his most recent record, Rye is Back to Vinyl the way most good musicians are today. So we'll close it out with one of his most recent tunes. 
I hope you made it to the end, and I hope you enjoyed it. Down that lonesome road and Angel said I Thank God I'm in his care Well It's I am in his care Yes I'm in my Savior's care Notice I am in his care In his care Wow Angels walking all around me Lord And the evil thoughts can harm me Lord And I thank God I'm in his care So keep them spinning, and I'm not going to see you down in Cuba.